Hello, this is Brent Gregory again, and we will look at um, accrual accounting, especially in the context of end of period adjustments. So let's have a bit of background to some accounting principles. Um, we will look at the, the time period principle, then we'll also look at the uh, profit recognition principle and the matching principle. So the time recognition period um, suggests that we adopt an artificial time period in accounting. So typically this is one year. So we produce our financial statement to match that year. But our transactions don't necessarily all always fit it neatly into that one year. So as well as that artificial period of the one year, we might also have interim periods. And those of you that have worked in business, I'm sure, would be aware of your, your quarterly reports or monthly reports. Now, to go with that, we have the, prof the profit recognition principle that suggests that, um, that we need to recognise income as it is earned, not as it is paid. And the matching principle recognises that um, financial statements, well, the, the matching principle acknowledges that the expenses we incur need to be matched against the income that they help produce. So at the end of a period, we produce financial statements that are likely to require end of period adjustments. Now let's see why and let's see simply how they would take place. So here we're talking about accrual accounting. Transactions are recorded when the income is earned or the expenses are incurred, as opposed to some very small businesses that use cash accounting, where we recognise transactions only when cash changes hands. The accounting standards in Australia, AASB 101, which are compatible with international accounting standards, um, requires financial statements to be prepared on the accrual basis. So let's look through um, a simple example of accrual accounting and with end of period adjustments. And we'll do this just over a, a one month period, appreciating the same principles apply, whether it's a quarter or a six monthly or for a year. So let's have a look at a, a simple business we have. We have a lawn mowing business that um, uh, generates $1,000 each week in revenue, which is paid Monday morning, 9am. And it also pays out its salaries of $500 a week, and it pays that in advance Monday morning, 9am. Now, why have I done that? Just to make this a simple case to explain the principle. Now, some things we see here, well, if we compare the cash received to the actual revenue earned. <clears throat> so on Monday the 1st, we've earned $1,000. Monday the 8th, we've earned and been paid $1,000. Monday the 15th, we've earned and been paid. Let me go back again. Monday the 1st, we've been paid $1,000. And we earn that for $200 a day over that period. Monday the 8th, we've paid $1,000. And we earn that at $200 a day over the week. Monday the 15th, we're paid $1,000 and we earn that at $200 a day over the week. Monday the 22nd, we're paid $1,000 and we earn that at $200 a day over the week. But Monday the 29th, we're paid $1,000 and we earn $200 on the Monday, $200 on the Tuesday and $200 on the Wednesday. But we still have the Thursday and the Friday that we haven't earned the income when we come to the end of the month. So in this period, while we were paid $5,000, we only earned $4,600. So what does this mean? At the end of the period, we have received $400 more than for the work we've done. And where does that come about? Well, we've been paid $200 each for Thursday the 1st and Friday the 2nd, but at the end of the month, we've not delivered this service and so we've not earned the income. So to acknowledge this, we need to have end of period adjusting entries. And what are those entries? We debit the revenue, or in this case we debit service revenue for the $400, and we credit unearned revenue for $400. So what we're doing is we're transferring 400, we're transferring $400 out of our revenue account into a liability. Why is it a liability? Because we've been paid for a service that we still have to deliver. So, the profit recognition principle 
is recognised in the period, revenue is recognised in the period in which we've earned. So now by recording only the $4,600, we're recognising the revenue in the period in which it's earned. We could go through, and I won't go through the detail, but exactly the same issue comes up for expenses. Um, and when we get to the end of the month, there's $200 that we've paid out that is an asset to us at the end. It's not really an expense yet because the, that salary, the service behind that salary is to be delivered next month. And so at the end of the month, we've paid salaries for work that's not been done. So we debit prepaid expenses, which is an asset account, and we credit the salary expense, which is an expense account. So our expenses come down by $200 and that's replaced by an asset. This helps us comply with the matching period, the, the matching principle. Expenses must be matched to the revenue they help produce. At the end of the period, we produce a simple trial balance. What's that? We've got cash, $2,500. That's the five payments of um, $500 less, sorry, that's the five payments of $1,000 less five payments of $500 we paid out in expenses, so we've got $2,500. We've got prepaid expenses of $200, that's Thursday and Friday and $100 each. And that's an asset. We have a liability of $400 being revenue of two days at $200, uh, and we generated income of $4,600 being um, effectively 23 days work we did at $200 a day, or the four full weeks at $400 plus the $600 we earned in the last week. Similar issue with expenses, so our trial balance balance is at $500. Um, let, let's just take a short diversion, one thing we, we uh, won't go into enormous detail, but just to give you a sense. And that's to do with reversals and that leads us to the worksheet. So what happens at the end of that month and the start of the next month, you've written up those journal entries and then you've got to get to the next month and you've got to reverse them out. You have well, on the first and second, the lawns are mowing and so the service is now delivered. So we need to reverse the previous entry, which is the debit unearned revenue, the credit revenue. Um, the same issue applies to the salaries. Now, we've only got two entries here, but you could have 20, 30, 50, 100 entries that this relates to. So a question we're now ask, is there an easier way? And in some ways, it is a bit pointless for items like this. Uh, it's not pointless if it's the end of the year and you need to produce the financial statements, but especially if you were doing a monthly period, it's, it would be a bit pointless. At the end of every month, we bring to account our accruals for a couple of days, just so we can reduce our financial statements, then at the start of the next month we reverse them all back out. So accounting has a solution to that and it is referred to as the worksheet. So what happens in the worksheet? This enables us to produce interim financial statements without doing journal entries that need reversing. So the worksheet is something that in fact is outside our accounting system. We take information from the accounting system, we put it in the worksheet, we do those adjustments that will require um, reversals. We produce financial statements in the worksheet um, and we can use those and then we just go back the next month without actually having to um, put those journals in and take them out. Um, there's another purpose of the journal that also enables us to map out our adjusting entries before we bring them to account in the journals. Um, so if we can see if there's any double up, we get a sense of how they are. We've got the opportunity to group like items. Um, we'll just see if they're reasonable. And so even if you're going to do the journal entries, which in exercises that I'll give you to do, you will be required to do not only the worksheet, but the journals. You would do them in the worksheet first. You will find it very helpful with regard to the worksheet to look at the a video called Accounting Worksheet. Um, the worksheet starts with the trial balance, um, which we've already seen. Adjustments could look something like this. Um, and then, so this was the adjustment 
This was the accounting worksheet before we did the adjustments. Then we've got the adjustments. We can see um, debit prepaid expenses, credit expenses, debit income, credit unearned revenue. And you'll see that the adjusted journal here in the worksheet comes, comes up with the same answer that we come up with when we did the previous adjusted trial balance. Um, you'll notice that the adjusted trial balance from the workbook is the same as the trial balance produced earlier when we did the journals. And there's the two of them together side by side. So, so far, what have we addressed? Unearned service revenue, prebate expenses. And we've reviewed how these support the revenue recognition principle and the matching principle. Uh, both of these types of accruals are of a similar nature, i.e. There are things that have been paid for but not yet provided or not yet consumed. And as a result, what we're doing is we're converting an income to a liability and we're also converting an expense to an asset. Now, there's two different types of accruals um, where service have been delivered but not yet paid for. So they are accrued revenue and accrued expenses. So let's go back to the same examples but just change it a little. So consider now that the lawn mower business is the same business, but the money has been received at the end of the week after the service is delivered and the expenses are paid at the end of the week. So really we think in both of these examples, the revenue and expenses are the same. It's just the collection of the cash, which is different. So the financial state, cash received compared to revenue. So this is a similar example before, but we'll notice in this last period down the bottom here, we've received $600, the same as before, but we've not been paid the $1,000. So how do we bring that to account? So we've worked for three days of which we've not been paid. Therefore, we've got three days at $200, which is $600. At the end of the month, we need to bring this to account. And so we now get to uh, accrued income. And so to acknowledge uh, the income we've earned, we need to bring into account. So we debit the accrued revenue. So this is an asset account. And we credit a revenue account. So naturally, this is the income account or the revenue account. So accrued expenses, our staff have worked for um, two days. Got their three days. They've worked for two days. Actually, they've worked for three days. They've worked for three days for which they have not been paid, being Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Um, so the staff work for three days for which they have not been paid. So our expenses are understated by $300. So what do we do? We debit the salary expense and we credit accrued. Um, four categories of adjustment. Unearned revenue and accrued revenue. And accrued expenses and prepaid expenses. Now it's some special categories of adjustments. And they are use of supplies and depreciation. So effectively these items are the nature of the usage of a prepaid expense. So what are we doing with expensing an asset? Something we've previously brought to account as an asset, we're now using up, so we're expensing it. So let's have a look. You've purchased supplies for $5,000 and you put them in the storeroom. Debit supplies $5,000, credit cash at bank $5,000. We use up the supplies without recording their usage, but at the end of the period we do a stock take and we find we've got $2,000 worth of supplies left in the storeroom. So what does that mean? Now we debit the supplies expense, $3,000, and we credit the supplies, or the supplies on hand, the asset account, for $3,000. So what have we done? We've transferred $3,000 of an asset into an expense, because sometimes also referred to as the written down value. So let's have a look, depreciation. We purchase an asset, let's say that's a motor vehicle. We pay $20,000 for it, we expect it to last for five years. So we go to expense it $4,000 every year. So this becomes our end of period adjustment. We debit depreciation expense $4,000 and we credit accumulated depreciation for $4,000.